Enough can't be said about commitment. Whatever it is that we're doing, there has to be a level of commitment shown for it to be taken seriously by anyone else. If there has not been a commitment shown by the party that's asking you to be involved with it, then you're not apt to take it very seriously yourself. If the people who are controlling it, directing it, leading it, <clears throat> aren't committed, then I, I just truly believe it's best that you lower your expectations to stay or get out. All depending on your 30, 60, 100 fold return expectations. Because uh, you could be casting C right on the concrete and don't know it. You can tell by the level of commitment. I, I run across over the years now, and I want to, and, and the reason why I want to preface this said over years because I, I don't want people who, who are in my life today in 2024 to think I'm just coming up with this stuff. No, I got a lot of gray hair. <laughs> These are life lessons. I'm not teaching from theory. I'm not teaching from knowledge. I'm teaching from the wisdom that I've gathered over the years from doing it right and wrong. I'm aware that I've done a lot of things wrong. I think it was Paul that says, I will boast in my infirmities. I don't have a problem with boasting in my infirmities. I have messed up a lot of times, but I can't keep saying that over and over again just to make you feel comfortable. But it's better to learn from somebody who's aware of their weaknesses and the mistakes that they've made so that you don't trip up and do the same thing. Uh, it's, it's, it's a good idea to learn from other people's experiences. And, and it's cool if you want to listen to them preach, you know, and, and unfortunately there's some people that quote unquote preach, uh, by projecting and preach by knowledge. Maybe one day we'll get into those things. If someone shows an interest and asks me to teach on it, then maybe I will. But what's important is that you understand that whether learned by, by accident or learned by experience, where it turned out good or bad, as most people understand it, experiences are good and bad to most. To me, uh, experience is just experience, not good, not bad. <laughs> As I think you, you have to learn how to take your experience and multiply your experience or take your experience and repent from your experience. In other words, turn it around and create something from that experience. This is my idea of taking some of those experiences and turning them around and giving them to my grandchildren, my brothers and sisters in Kenya and whomever else feel like they want to benefit from this information. Now watch this. That's my commitment. I'm all in on teaching spiritual truths. Teaching spiritual truths. All in. where my experience comes from, being all in on learning from the spirit, learning from the learning from the experiences of pursuing God. That's the way most of you in the Christian community understand it. But in living life, you are pursuing a better way of living and being in God by coming to understand who you are in Christ, which is your anointing, which is your contribution through the spirit of truth.
that was promised if you will accept him. But if you're not committed to something, you know, then it's very hard to understand when you're around people who are committed. People who are not committed will say they're committed and preface it with their feelings or their idealism regardless of what the word says about their situation and how they should view it. Then they'll slap on grace, they'll slap on mercy for themselves. Not understanding that grace and mercy is for the vessel to use towards other people. I want you to get it because I don't want to just share this with you so that you can just say, oh, wow, that was great or whatever. No, you got to get this. This is an integral part of the journey from Egypt to Canaan. These are not unknown lands to these people at this time. They were on purpose going towards something better. The thing that they lacked was commitment. So Moses is spending time with them, teaching them how to look at things the right way instead of as positives and negatives. And he's walking with them. Wow teaching his brother Aaron in his later years how to also teach his children within their family line, the Levitical family line, how to serve. This is a big deal. If you do well, what I'm about to share with you happens. If you do well, in other words, the onus, the ownership is on you to do well by being committed to your part in the midst of some people not doing well. When you're committed, you, it, it doesn't, there's, there's a saying, the tide rises all boats. Not necessarily, because it's this. You still have to, you still have to accept the tide rising for you. A lot of people don't understand that their walls are blocking parts of the tide rising because they're not committed to having the experience because they still see it as good or bad, when in truth, they're just experiences. When I was serving years ago in ministry, what scared people when I was an executive pastor at a couple of churches were the, were the experiences. They thought the experiences would cut them down when it, or cut us down because I was a part of these experiences. In truth, the experiences are meant to bring you together. There was one ministry I was involved with where we were losing our best people who happened to be our most successful in business people, which means we're also losing income. And the main reason why is because the people did not enjoy their experiences. And I'm speaking in general, but they didn't see, they didn't like what they were seeing. And the leadership was not taking ownership of it, me being one of them. Well, 
well, at that time, volunteer leadership, but eventually became paid leadership. Because I was going through my own experiences as well in the midst of it. So the lack of commitment showed through. Uh, 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 someone that I know often says today, 2024, and I've heard this before over the years, but he, it's a big statement for him. It says uh, that uh, something always falls on leadership. And I think he, I think he was talking, I think he says, um, I, think it, I, think, I think it has to do with, with the results of anything falls on the leadership. I think that's what he tries to, or not tries, but I think that's what he conveys. The results fall on the leadership. In other words, the leadership always have to take responsibility for it. I think it's a good saying. But if the leadership is unaware of their lack of commitment, now here's the thing. Between each other, if the people see a break in the commitment of the leadership with each other, Not that they're not personally committed. They're not committed to themselves, the leadership. They're like pieces of a puzzle. If the puzzle isn't whole, then the people will not follow. Not the, not the ones who know what commitment means. They just won't. But if you do your part, what you see, what I'm about to read, you will see it happening. Well, let me get down to reading it because I'm doing a lot of talking. <laughs> oh, okay. Number, numbers is a big, big uh, chapter, by the way. So number seven, that is. So we're going to stay in this for a little while because it is meaty. And it is wonderful. Number seven, verse 10. And the princes offered for dedication, dedicating of the altar in the day that it was anointed, even the princes offered their offering before the altar. Verse 11, And the Lord said unto Moses, They shall offer their offering each prince on his day for the dedicating of the altar. And he that offered his offering the first day was Nashon, the son of, of, of uh, Amenadab of the tribe of Judah. Now because... Um, this is kind of repetitive throughout all of the families, all the, way, all the way down to Benjamin. But for the most part, I believe it was all very consistent. And this is what it shows. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read through the whole thing and study the whole thing just, but I'm not going to do it over on, on here. Um... And I've read it before, just so you know. <laughs> I have read this before many times. But I just want to make sure that I go into the weeds a little bit just to make sure the consistency is there. Because in that, the commitment was the burnt, the sin, and the peace offering for every prince. Every prince represents the tribes that were numbered. Every tribe gave, had a day to offer for the altar the burnt sin and peace offerings. This is not insignificant. The 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 um, the burnt offering was a bullock, a lamb, and a ram. Three parts. First year, representing each tribe, that was the peace offering. I'm sorry, the, uh, the, uh, the burnt offering. The princes dedicated themselves to the ways of the Levitical priest. That was established through Moses to Aaron and they made a commitment 
to follow suit based upon what they had learned the first year. Did you catch the first year? So that year spent learning the ways of God through the hand of Moses Uh, burnt offering, they, they now were committing themselves to these ways. And you know the scripture, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through, you know, I mean, we know all these things, but do we equate them? In, and again, that was in the, and that was in the time of David. I believe David, that Psalm was David. But but we know these things, but are we making the connection of what it means to be committed to the ways of God? Are we making the connection? Do we want the ways of God to, uh, to pertain to our life without, it, without us being the vessel towards other people's lives? In other words, we learn these things for ourselves, but we don't give these things to others. Are we committed? The princes were committing themselves to the ways of God. And for doing so, they brought the burnt offering, which is dedication of themselves. Sin offering, which is the washing of their sins. There's no, and again, we understand, there's no more and I hope you catch me when I say that. There is no more offering for sin. But there is always offering for dedication. There is always offering for peace. Because peace is between the parties. You've heard me say that before, I think. I'm not sure. I've been saying it for so long. <laughs> I'm not sure when I say it anymore. But... The whole purpose of a peace offering is not for God. It's between the parties. So when they're bringing five rams, five bullocks, whatever the numbers are, they're bringing it for the benefit of the other members because they're showing their commitment. If a peace offering was never brought, there would be no commitment to the people. It would negate the burnt offering. It would negate the sin offering. I'm trying to think of different ways to say this so that different people will hear it differently and get it. These are the ways of God. So in other words, if any man has ought one with another, You're, listen, you're supposed to leave your offering there at the altar. Now, maybe this will give you a new perspective on the New Testament versions of these things, or the Greek versions of these things. You know, you leave your offering at the altar, and then you go make things right with the brother, which is the peace offering. I mean, you know, it's 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 uh, what's that? It's that it's that matching game where you mix all the cards together and you try to match the cards. It's like matching the old with the new, so that you understand the the consistency between the Old Testament and the New Testament, which is all together work all things working together for good for those who love God and are called according to His purpose. And tying the old and the new together and understanding the maturity of your walk. It's showing commitment to, to, to living out the consistent word of God. Instead of the separation that happens saying, oh, where well, the Hebrews, that was different than the Greeks. No, there is neither Greek nor Jew. <laughs> I crack myself up sometimes, so you have to forgive me. There is neither, do you understand what he means by now that there is neither Greek nor Jew? 
everything is consistent with the love of God, the respect. When you do this, the princes will give to you. Keep in mind who I'm called to. I'm not called to the newly formed Christian. These are not messages that new Christians can even understand. They need to research it. They can still listen, but they need to research it. I'm called to the leadership. And you know who you are. And most of you don't make yourself known, and that's cool. You don't have to. But the goal is my grandchildren, my brothers and sisters in Kenya, and those who benefit from this information, is that we begin to walk committed to the Word of God, committed to the love, the respect, the grace and mercy towards others of God. We, we don't want you practicing lawlessness. And nobody has to know, but God does know your level of commitment to his love, his respect. You can stand on stage or go out in the, into the community and, 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 and walk it out. You can cast out demons and everything else prophesy, but without love and respect. And for you that, that, that don't understand what I mean by love and respect, because God is love, so you understand that portion. But if you read through the book of Proverbs and understand the seven pillars from the female point of view, you'll understand what it means in Ephesians when it talks about loving and respecting. It's all very simple and all very consistent. Old and New Testament, Ephesians and Proverbs. And Galatians. Because it talks about the dynamic between the male and the female and what's expected. For, his, for, for the walk to be whole, not for him, but for the walk to be whole. Sometimes... Hmm. Sometimes when you think you're putting someone else together, you're really causing division by not being obedient. Not to that man, but to that word. You think you're getting over and you're really causing issues. Sometimes the male... And I pick on I pick on the women, I pick on the men enough. And I'll pick on the continue to pick on men and women. But sometimes sometimes the men understand what's wrong and because they want to keep the peace, they just allow the woman to do what they do. And then what happens with the woman is she wants to argue. And the man's like not really interested in arguing. We're just going to commit right here. Because I love you more than the argument. Sometimes a woman's upset because the man won't lead. Or she doesn't think the man is leading. Man naturally leads. What man doesn't naturally do is want to get into an argument with every woman he gets in gets in relationship with on whatever level. He just lets it go. Cash app dollar sign Mr. Paul Dozier. Cash app dollar sign Mr. Paul Dozier. God bless you. I hope this is a blessing to you. If it is, please share this with other people. I notice I get no shares on these things other than the shares that I put out there. And some people have told me they appreciate these things and it makes me wonder why you don't share? Uh, if it's a blessing to you, it'll be a blessing to other people. And I pray that you consider sharing. And also, if you want to give a donation, it would go a long way in helping my brothers and sisters in Kenya. Because as I receive, I can give. 
and God bless you. Thank you.